Hey everybody, it's your girl Lexis, and today we're doing a car crash incident. I started out with outlining everything that I wanted to do with eyeliner, and I'm using liquid latex and a sponge. And cotton balls, the usual. So, right now, like I said, sorry for the quick intro, but I kind of had to speed this up a little bit because it would have been a really, really, really long video. Um, but, okay, uh, oh, yeah, doy. I have to pour it on a palette because using the bottle, it's so old, but it still works. So I'm going to outline everything. Oh, that's a lot. I may or not put too much there. Oh, that's a lot of cotton, too. Oh, my gosh. That's not good. Oh, gosh. Okay. Oh, come on. I hate this stuff sometimes because it doesn't spread. And it's just a mess. Okay, so I'm going to do all of them around my face. Okay. Ay, ay. Well, that is way off. <laughs> oh, well. Um, so... As you see, at one point, the sponge does stick with liquid latex, so the tip of that sponge just gets destroyed. So make sure to use like a reusable, reusable sponge, not an actual beauty blender, unless you have like 15 million like lying around, unlike me. I have all this stuff. I don't know if you guys see that baby. My boyfriend keeps messaging me. Um, but yeah, see, like, even I flipped over the sponge because it was getting so obnoxiously annoying. See, for that, I didn't really want to use liquid latex. I just wanted to give it texture on my skin. So when I did paint it over, all right, gotta let it dry. Oh, we're back. Okay. So I picked out little holes that I wanted, kind of scabbed it up a little. Now, since it's dry, we put your foundation on. You're trying to match your skin tone. See, even like me putting a lot on isn't helping sometimes, but I'm going to try. Now I'm just patting it down very lightly with a sponge, as you can tell. And for some reason, it looks even worse. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually just do my whole face and foundation as well, like I just did. Now it's translucent powder time. Alright, now I have a fluffy brush. It'll go faster. Like I said, you won't really see this much of the skin after I do all the bruising and the blood and the... All that are fun stuff, you know? Sorry if you keep seeing me make a face. I'm like snuff stuffy. So. I now get to take a crappy little makeup brush that you get in a kit. And I'm going to take some actually contour palette. And we're going to contour the inside of the wound to give it more depth. So it's actually like, sh like it would be actually like showing if you cut yourself and it's a deep cut, you're going to see depth in what you just cut yourself. Well, wait, you just cut yourself. You're going to see some depth and some shadowing detail. So I even put cut on my nose, like just a little slight, like a small little slice or it's like you pick the scab. Lip is going to be bleeding. Had to mark that out. <sighs> ay, ay. Alright, now I'm going to get my eyeshadow fluffy brush and I'm going to use a purple. To bruise, I'm usually doing a purple, mix of purples, browns, blues, blacks, and a yellow and a skin tone color. I may not show them all because I'm stupid, you know how it is. 
But this is very simple look because you can pretty much make those marks anywhere you want anybody. Like if you would picture someone in a car crash and they went flying through a window or they got hit, where would you expect to get hit mainly? The face. Because the airbag mainly will hit your face. And if your hands are above too far, your hands will hit your face. And getting that much of a compact in a car accident can injure your face in general. Okay, so now I have my bigger palette. And I have a more of a compacted brush, which didn't work. See the blue on it? I wasn't doing anything, so I give up. <laughs> I said, screw it. And we used a fluffy brush. So we're just dabbing it on there a little bit so then I could add the purples, the yellows, just like a bruise. Kind of putting a little red on my nose too. Because it, it was cold out when I got in the car accident. This is actually, it was winter time when I got in my accident. Because, yes, this is what I was thinking about that day. And I decided, well, let's do this. Alright, so I got a black, black, black. I went inside the wounds. And now, what time is it? Blood time. It sucks to, oh, come on, open. Oh, look at that. Okay, here we go. Ignore my chubby, fat legs. All right, now we just take that crappy little brush again, or compact thingy, and we're going to dip it in blood and go inside those wounds. For some reason, in that forehead part, you can't really see it, but that's the part where I didn't know where I was going to put blood at because it was kind of a weird-looking wound. Because I wanted it to be thinner, but it didn't work out that nicely. So, I just had to make it work. A little slice on the nose. And the nosebleed, which I marked out in the beginning, but forgot about <laughs> until the end. It kind of sucked because I have a septum piercing. Try not to get the fake blood on my piercing, because that would have sucked when it dried. Okay. Now we need a crap ton to put inside the wound there. I feel bad that you guys can't see it all. For some reason, I'm being stupid. But you'll see how I put it in at the end here. At the top. Like I said, it doesn't always have to be exactly like mine, but... Try to put them into the wounds. And if you want, at the end, like I did, I mine's edible blood, so I put it in my teeth. And then... Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Hit that bell notification to become part of LexFam. Bye, guys. Love you.